Critics of the Alberta oil sands often point to shale production south of the border as the biggest competitive factor uh, for Canadian oil and saying that the shale is low cost, Alberta oil sands are high cost, and that bodes poorly for the Canadian future. But we're gonna to talk to Ed Hurst, who's an economist at the University of Houston and a veteran oil man, and he's going to give you another perspective. So welcome to the, uh, to the interview, Ed. Thank you, Markham. Now, in our conversations, you have said that of the 13 million barrels a day that the US produced before the pandemic, probably 50% of that, or maybe even more, requires $50 West Texas Intermediate to make any money on capital, which is, that's high cost marginal oil. Have I got that correct? Yes. Okay, what's the, why is that the case? And why has shale in the last 12 years since it really got rolling, never or very seldom been able to make a profit? Well, it's, it's the marginal play. And so as the price goes up, capital will chase, will chase that ever increasing price. You know, Markham, there's still wells in North Dakota that make sense at $110 a barrel. It's just nobody's drilled them lately. And, and people talk about $50 a barrel is the new break even. Well, that's because the guys who can't make money at North of, uh, are gone. Um, and, and so of the 8 million barrels a day of tight oil, production in the United States, you know, 50 bucks is an average. That means half of them are up above that. And they aren't going to be here in two, three years time. The rock will still be there. The asset will still be there. But if the price is not 60, $70 a barrel, they won't be producing. Well, my understanding is, uh, you know, we're around high 30s or low 40s for WTI right now. You know, the, the best guess that I've seen is that probably you know, we're headed for around a, a, a 50 ish average looking out into the into the near future. So that really doesn't bode well for American uh, shale production. No, it doesn't. Uh, you know, keep in mind that OPEC analyzes every shale play company. Their investment banks do a great job of it. They publish the data. Also keep in mind that through their sovereign wealth funds, they see the economics of every private equity backed firm in the shale place. So they know everything that the shale companies have. They know how many chips they have. They know what their cards are. They know the economics. And so for example, we just saw ConocoPhillips buy Concho for a little over $9 billion. Less than a year and a half ago, Concho had bought RSP Permian for a little over $9 billion. Somewhere in there is a free company. Um, again, it's the assets and, uh, you know, keep in mind some, some of the players are going to do really well. We had partners drilling oil wells in the Nibrera and the Codell, you know, 10 years ago, and they made money at $20 a barrel. There are still locations in the U S where that tight oil does work, but the vast majority require much higher prices. Now, we should point out that lately some of the company, Canadian oil sands companies have been talking about what their break-evens are. We, see, we saw Synovus and Husky merge, and the, uh, what they said in the press release is that the break-even will be $36 WTI today and $33 within a few years. Suncor is talking about some of its assets break-even being $25 a barrel. So the... The Canadian producers seem to be, the big ones anyway, seem to be well set up uh, for the future. But at what point do these high cost American shale producers simply go bust and, and get out of the market? I mean, I, I, we've been talking about this for years that this was going to happen. When well, they are, go they are going bust. I mean, we're dealing with hundreds of companies that have failed hundreds of thousands of workers that have been put out of work since the Saudis declared war on shale in 2014. You know, all through the Trump presidency, he has asked for cheap oil and, and OPEC plus has acceded to that request. It's been devastating for those who've gone in and, and spent a huge amount of money acquiring acreage and a huge amount of money drilling these plays. And, and, and quite frankly, the U.S. shale plays have a lot of sunk cost. Uh, you know, it's there. And we're going through the bankruptcies to wash that out right now. Uh, the lifting costs are you know, anywhere from 7 to $8 a barrel. So 
you know, as, as we move along, they're going to try and, and, and milk every barrel out that they can. As, you know, if they're making 24 bucks a barrel just on lifting, that makes perfect sense. The challenge is the decline rates on these wells are strong. And in two to three years time, more than half of that 8 million barrels a day will be gone from the market. I'm going to ask you to look into your crystal ball now, and this will be the last question, by the way. So look into your crystal ball and tell us uh, in 2025 your opinion of how much of that 8 million barrels a day of shale production will be around five years from now. So I'm, I'm expecting that by 2025, we'll probably have about four to five million barrels a day in the in the tight shale plays. Uh, the technology is developing. Folks are getting better at it. Uh, they're leaner. Um, there will be a lot fewer people in the patch. But uh, those plays will survive. They'll continue to survive. It's just going to be uh, challenging. I, I do expect the price of oil to bump uh, uh, in late 2021, early 2022. I think that OPEC plus is going to take the passive aggressive approach December one and do nothing. The decline rates on the wells outside the United States, you know, 3% per annum are going to catch up with uh, a resurgent economy. And, uh, you know, the Middle East is, is down by over a quarter in terms of, of active drilling rigs at this moment. If they don't start going back into the field, we're going to run into a, a decline from the supply, a depletion that's going to run up against a, a resurgent demand when we come out of the pandemic recession, and and the price will will go up. That will that will attract capital back in. Uh, we'll be talking about the resurgence of the oil patch, and you know happy days are here again. And the guys in the shale plays will think that they they may have made it. Um, I, I think that might be a false hope for many of them. Ed, thank you very much for this. As always, appreciate your insights into the U.S. oil and gas industry. My pleasure, Markham.